Hello, and welcome to Upcycled Maker Club. Um, normally, <laughs> I would be coming to you at uh, 3 p.m. on Mondays, but I went to Facebook, I hit stream, nothing happened. I did the whole program, didn't have any idea that it wasn't streaming. So I'm hoping that's not happening this time. I'm gonna, gonna kind of be a little paranoid and just give my, uh, my phone a quick check to make sure that it's actually coming across this time. Um, but hopefully everything will work. Looks like it is. Okay. <sighs> you gotta love technology, don't you? Okay. So welcome to Upcycled Makers Club. My name is Sandy Roberts and I'm the Makerspace Coordinator for the Warren County Library System. And each week, usually at three o'clock, I bring you some fun thing that you can make, create, innovate with, um, and just explore using common materials you can find around the house, upcycled materials, um, and just ways to get creative with what you've got around the house. Um, one thing that we always want to do as makers is try and mash up different ideas and really make them unique, make them our own special something. So that's what being a maker is all about. It's also about kind of rolling with the punches. So when your program doesn't stream the first time, you try a second. Okay, <laughs> today I have for you some fun ways to use all those leaves that are starting to accumulate in our yards and parks uh, for some really fun creative art projects. First off, we're gonna get out some paint and make some great leaf prints. And then we're gonna use the idea of negative space to create um, these really neat uh, leaf paintings. Okay, so these are, these are pretty fun. You gotta hold them up a little higher. Um, so I really love these, they're really colorful. Um, they're really pretty, you could frame them, you could use them for postcards, you could use them for greeting cards. Um, and depending on the kind of paint you use, you could print onto fabric if you have fabric paint. I'm gonna be using craft acrylics today, so that would work on paint, on a fabric. <laughs> so it's a nice way to make maybe a fall tote or a cool pillow, something like that. So fun project, that's our first thing that we're gonna do. The second thing is using our leaves, and I hope it doesn't fall apart because it's still wet, um, to make, hello, some cool decor items, like this little wreath. Very simple to do, an old cereal box or paper plate and some real leaves from the yard and you can create this really, really great, um, beautiful work of art. Or, and this is the one I was working on before and we'll keep building on it now, you can go ahead and make a really cool mask for fall, okay? This is really fun if you want to um, get a bunch of people together, make your masks and then share your photos. It's a great socially distanced way to um, share your art and creativity for the fall. Um, this was actually one of the projects that I shared with folks when Superstorm Sandy hit Blairstown and knocked out power. That Halloween, there was no trick or treating because there were still wires down, but my business on Main Street happened to have power and Wi-Fi and heat and running water. And so we invited the community in and uh, this is one of the things we made were all kinds of fun leaf masks because, you know, they were simple materials that were inexpensive and we could all have fun. So we'll learn a little bit more about how to make that as well. Okay, materials are really simple today. Uh, you'll need some paint. You can use washable paint if you're more comfortable with that. Acrylics are great. Um, you know, whatever you happen to have on hand. Watercolors, however, do not work great for this project. Um, we're gonna need some paper. We're gonna need some paint brushes, right? Definitely gonna need some paint brushes for this. And then I like to use just a paper plate or some of these yogurt containers for my paints. Um, it's helpful to have, oh, we're dropping stuff all over the place. Helpful to have um, like a glue stick, not because we're gonna use the glue necessarily, but because it works as a brayer and we can rub our leaves as we're making our prints. And I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. It just helps um, the process a little bit. Um, we'll also need a pair of scissors and as I mentioned, some paper plates. Now, if you don't wanna use paper plates, uh, you can certainly, like I said, cut up an old cereal box or a cracker box or something like that. You just trace the plate onto it and that will give you the basis for your wreath. Okay, I think that's the basics of what we need today. So why don't we head on over to the other camera and uh, see what we've got. Okay, so here I have a whole bunch of leaves that I've collected from around the yard. Um, it's good to put them in a tray or something like this so you can kind of see the different colors of what you've got around. Um, 
One thing I love to do is to take a little time and just identify some of the different leaves that I find in the yard. Get out maybe um, you know, a, a field guide and check out what kind of leaves you are collecting. And that's also partially for safety because truthfully, <laughs> some leaves like poison ivy leaves are beautiful, gorgeous leaves, but they have the oils in it that will um, give you a bad reaction and make you itchy. So it does help to kind of know what leaves you're collecting. And of course, you don't only have to collect from um, trees. You know, this is of course an oak leaf, but this beautiful burgundy colored leaf is from um, the forsythia bush in my yard, which is a big shrub that makes these beautiful yellow flowers um, in springtime. So, you know, look around. Get a collection too of both kind of fresher leaves and older leaves. Sometimes the fresher leaves are a lot easier for um, printing with. So uh, you may want to just think about that and then really try to find ones that have interesting vein patterns on them because that just gives um, a more fun print. You kind of want to, obviously you see these leaves aren't perfect. They don't have to be perfect. It's okay if they're kind of beat up. That actually makes it more interesting, I think, in a lot of ways. Um, so don't feel like you have to get the perfect leaf for this craft. Okay, now you notice I put down some newspaper here or a, a paper bag that was kind of beat up because we're going to be using paint and I didn't want to get it all over the place. Okay, let's see if I can kind of get this to... being a bit of a perfectionist there. Okay, let me grab <laughs> some paper. Okay, I'm actually using a thicker kind of cardstock right now because I think it's a little bit easier, but pretty easy to get started with this. And I'm gonna grab a paper plate. I'm just gonna use this for now as my um, palette. And what I could do actually earlier, I used the paper plate that I used for my palette after it was dry, I just, used it then for the wreath cla class so I didn't have to throw it out. I don't know where the one, the other one was, but so you can just use a paper plate that maybe didn't get used for food, but it's still um, enough to uh, be able to, to use again. So let me grab my colors. I've got a couple different colors here. All right. And you know, you don't have to use real leaf colors or fall colors. You can have fun and just kind of use whatever colors you like. It's up to you. Um, I'm kind of going with a, a bit of a fall palette here, but you know, use neons. Like I've got this neon orange. I think it's just kind of cool. Um, and remember you can mix colors. So I'm using, as I said before, I'm using an acrylic, but you could certainly use a washable, um, tempera or poster paint instead, especially if you're working with younger kids, you know, whatever you've got, this is a pretty forgiving craft. I've got a second plate, uh, to actually use to paint my leaf. So you want the vein side up, the bumpy side. I'm gonna go ahead and just grab some color. Now you can do all one color or you could do a couple different colors. I enjoy doing a couple different colors when I do this. Uh, Cause I just think it makes it look pretty neat to have a couple different colors on there. See how they all kind of mix. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. I'm just, and you wanna load it up pretty well. You don't wanna go crazy because if there is like a ton of paint on this, when you go and put it down on the paper, it's gonna, you're gonna get a blob instead of a nice print. So, you know, you wanna put on a decent amount of paint, but you don't wanna go crazy where, you know, it's like just all paint and it's like dripping in paint. You don't want that. So there we go. I put a couple different bits of paint on. I like to leave the stem on for this. Okay, so that I have um, a little bit of control. And I'm just going to gently lay my leaf down on the paper where I like. And I'm actually going to go ahead and grab a second there we go. bit of scrap um, paper and my glue stick, Aha. which is right here. So I'm just going to use the glue stick. You can use a rolling pin too, a can of soup, whatever you've got, to kind of roll over my leaf to make the print. Now the goal here is you don't want to wiggle that leaf around while you're rolling it. You want it to stay nice and still so you get a, a good print. Let's see how this one came out. Gently lift. And again, I'm just gonna pick it up by the stem. Oh, look at that, that came out pretty great. 
I like that a lot. That is really nice print there. Let's do one more just so we can kind of play with it a little bit, right? And these are, like I said, these are great to make inexpensive decor. You could just pop that into a frame and you've got something really cool. It makes a good gift. You could do this onto a pillow form with a little, that has like some burlap maybe or canvas on it and um, have fun with that. You could use fabric paints if you have them around. You know, you can really just go kind of crazy and um, be really creative and see what you come up with. Okay, here we go. And I'm just going to kind of orient this a little bit differently. And down onto the paper, kind of leave it steady. Take my scrap and use my glue stick to roll. And again, the goal is just to make sure it stays nice and still on there that we don't roll it around, move it around so we get a good print. And you'll find too, if you sandwich the paper, sometimes you get um, kind of a cool print on both, both of your pieces of paper. Okay, let's see. Let's see how this one did. Lifting it up. There you go. Beautiful. I love that. So there you go. That's a nice print. You could frame that. You could make that into a card. You know, you could have a lot of fun. You could laminate that and wouldn't it make a great placemat like for, on your table for fall? And of course, you don't have to use white paper. You could do this on black paper or dark brown paper, or even, you know, paper bags like this and get a whole different look. Okay, so it's a really, really versatile. I'd love to see what you come up with and what you create. Okay, now the second idea, another piece of paper. I have a lot of nice artwork for my, my uh, house today. Oh, goodness, okay. Okay, so for the second craft, we're gonna use what they call negative space. So, Basically, we're gonna create the shape of a leaf by where the leaf is not, okay? Which sounds a bit weird, but it does make some sense. Now for this, you may want to go ahead and put a little bit of glue to make this a little tacky, because um, we're gonna stick it to the paper. We don't, again, we don't want it to move around too much. Now, I'm, you'll notice I'm not really cleaning my brush or anything. You may want to be a little more careful with that. That's up to you. I'm just kind of demonstrating here. Okay, so now you're going to stick it down and you'll notice this time I left the veiny side up um, because I want to get as smooth a finish as I can there. Okay, clean off my brush a little bit, grab some fresh paint and for this you're going to start from the center and brush out. Now you kind of want to go dry brush on this, you don't want to load your brush too much. And just kind of brush out and you can, you know, have fun with what that shape becomes. And when you lift, ta-da! Now this one had some holes in it, so we got a little bit in there, but that's pretty cool. So there you go. You can see the shape of the leaf from where it isn't. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do a couple of these. Just gonna press it down again. And maybe I'll use a different color. Ooh, look at that. That's blending really cool, isn't it? Kind of have two colors on the brush. Pretty fun. There we go. Okay. Fun. It's just it's so pretty. It's just different. This would also work on fabric if you wanted. This would also work on a dark color of paper. Okay. So you can really just um, have a lot of fun with it, really experiment with how you use your paints. This one can be a little more challenging, so sometimes younger kids may need help understanding if they don't want to put too much paint on it. Um, but there you go. That's the basic... Oh, I got my fingerprints on it. I'm always doing that. I could just put another one there and do it. Now, the other thing that you can do, and this is really fun, is I'm gonna grab my paper towel, is if I do wanna add maybe more um, dimension, is I could come back here. Oh, I just ruined my leaf. <laughs> no. What I was gonna say is the way that I did this with this leaf is I painted it black on the veiny side and then did that printing technique and pressed it down into the shape to give it kind of 
use two techniques at once and give it a little bit more definition, which is a lot of fun to do. But unfortunately, I was not being gentle with my leaf and I kind of ripped him. <laughs> so you gotta have to be careful. But you get the general idea and that's really fun. It's a fun way to, um, to kind of play with color, right? And to play with that shape. The other thing you can do is you can put some Google eyes in there and make little faces and have leafy friends. Okay, so you could take it totally in a silly direction too. It's whatever you want. So those are our paint crafts. Next, we are gonna move on. I'm just gonna put my paint over here so I don't end up with it all over the place. To using you know, a paper plate like this and our scissors to create a wreath. And again, if this was dry, I would just cut this one and reuse this plate, okay? Because um, I don't wanna, I don't wanna waste a plate if I don't have to. But here we go. All we're gonna do is just kind of give that a fold and start the cut, okay? And we really just want that edge. Now, different paper plates will give you a different edge. This one's pretty curved. I like a flatter plate usually, but this is what I had. And like I said, if you only have some cardboard around or maybe a cereal box, just trace your trace your plate, maybe two different size plates, like a dinner plate and a, a snack plate or a dessert plate. Um, trace one inside the other, and you'll be able to get the same kind of wreath um, base. So we're really just using it as a place to attach um, our leaves. So there you go, right? We've got a nice place to kind of attach our leaves, and you could decide do you want to kind of do it up or down? I think I'm going to go for that. I am going to grab my cup and a paintbrush and some glue. Where did my glue go? Now, you can use, um, you can try using stick glue. I find it's not strong enough for this. Um, you can certainly use like a, a basic craft white glue. Um, I really love a tacky glue for this. I find that it just, it just adheres a little bit better. And I do kind of prefer to put it into my um, cup and then use a paintbrush to apply the glue. Now, there are a couple ways you can do this. You can apply your glue to the <coughs> to your wreath um, and stick your leaves on, or you can apply the glue to the leaf and stick it to the wreath. It's really a matter of personal preference. I like to put it on the wreath, wreath because I find that I end up with less on my fingers, <laughs> which is desirable because I tend to make a bit of a mess. So I'm just going to kind of show you here how to do this. Well, I mean, you want to put a pretty good coat of glue on here because you want to be able to really adhere those leaves. Um, the first layer, very easy. The second layer can be harder because sometimes the leaves don't want to stick to each other, um, even with the glue, especially if they're they're fresher. This is one of those times when you kind of want to use the, the older leaves. Um, and honestly, that 3D can be really fun. So play with it. See what works for you, what you like, what looks pretty. Um, and what sticks well. And different leaves stick differently too. Waxier leaves are gonna be harder to get to attach. So like that oak leaf, that's a, it's a little bit of a waxier leaf. It's got a coating to it. Um, so I like these. These are from, I think, I think these are from an ash. I'm trying to remember. But yeah, so you're just gonna go ahead and stick your leaf on. Now you do wanna kind of plan a little bit and you can decide if you wanna leave the uh, stems on or not. I like them. Normally I would kind of lay these out and kind of plan out first, but for now I'm just going to kind of go ahead and stick them on. This is also a great spot to pull in any um, items you might have found like uh, acorns or maybe some dried berries or anything like that. Now you notice I'm not really sticking leaf to leaf. I'm really just sticking to the base. I want that kind of 3D. I want it to kind of come up off the the paper plate a little bit. And this is an easy one for anyone, any age can stick, you know, pretty leaves, right, to a paper plate. So um, it's very forgiving that way. And again, it's nice to be able to decorate maybe, um, you know, your front door or something like that, but something that's natural that maybe you made from your own backyard. And especially for kids, it's really cool if they can be the ones that go, oh, well, that's, you know, a birch or that's uh, the oak from in back. Right? It's um, very empowering to be able to kind of share that knowledge, I think. I'm apparently feeling very yellow mood today. <laughs> don't know why. Just ends. I'm just kind of grabbing some of my yellow leaves here. Kind of working a theme. Now, sometimes when I do this, I will 
kind of post, you know, put them, I'll start with one and kind of go around that way. Right now I'm just kind of going around in a, in a circle. It's really up to you, you can play with it. And the nice thing about this glue, it's tacky, it's gonna give you some time before you have to decide. Oh, that one, I put that backwards. I'm putting these with, for the most part, the veins down, but it's really, there's no rules, right? No rules, it's your creation. You get to make the rules. Isn't that fun? That isn't something that we get to do all the time these days, right? <laughs> that can be a challenge. That can be a challenge. So here we go. I'm going to put, and I'm just kind of playing with shape. You might play with color. Really, whatever you've got, you know, on hand. And here we go. I did not just, yeah, I'm feeling the yellow today. Okay, I'm going to come in here with this. Let me grab a small one. You can see how it's useful to kind of have some space to lay these out. That's why I have that nice tin for all of them. There we go. So that's my basic wreath, right? Kind of just covering it. Now from here, I can come in and layer on additional items. If I really want to, I could come to the back and put larger leaves along the back of this to kind of give it um, depth. I could glue on berries. You might want to use a hot glue for something like that. Uh, just because they tend to be heavier. Or I could just, you know, put in like one or two accent pieces. Like if I had something that was a pretty red. Or, you know, like something. Yeah, I've got some of these little. These are from the Sprothysia. These I love these little burgundy ones, you know. Maybe stick in something green. So you could just have fun with it. And go kind of crazy. Like this one. I kind of put in some of the, the different reds and burgundies. Well, I lost a leaf. Um... So yeah, you can just kind of get creative. It's really fun. Now, for our mask, a little bit different. I'm just going to move this. And, okay. So for our mask, what I did was we took another paper plate. And again, this can be a paper plate you used for your paint, and now it's dry. And we're just going to cut it in half. And you don't have to worry too much because we're not going to see... Um, the, the paper plate itself because you're gonna the goal is to cover the whole paper plate so um, and as I was mentioning before this craft came about <laughs> very much because we just needed something fun so I've cut my plate in half and we had lots of paper plates on hand now the next thing we're gonna do is cut high eye holes now you might want to hold it up and kind of get a sense mark it ask a friend to help I just kind of I've done a couple of these, so I just kind of winged it. So you're going to make a cut, watching your fingers, like that. And then you're going to just come in here and just kind of cut a little circle or a oval shape. Like that. Okay. And then you're just going to do it on the other side. Because, you know, or however many eyes you have. And this is kind of the most challenging part. You can, of course, um, again, just trace a pattern onto some cardboard or print a mask template on, on the computer. Um, there are lots of them out there. And this is, you know, these aren't perfect. I'm not going to be too, too worried about it. I think I did a better job last time. But you get the basic idea. And look, I did pretty good. Now I want to make a spot for my nose. So for that, I'm just going to make a little triangle. You can round that, make it bigger, smaller, whatever you got to do. So that your nose has a place to go. And again, you see I overcut there? Doesn't matter. You're not going to see it. So that's how you would make your mask template. And as you can see, I started here. I, this one I started towards the center, attaching my leaves. And it's the same basic idea. I'm just going to go ahead and use my glue. And stick on my leaves. For this, I do like to kind of create a center. And when I'm thinking about how I'm placing things, I am thinking about um, how I might place things if they were feathers on like a Mardi, Mardi Gras mask. That's kind of where my brain goes to. So I want to kind of place things in a similar manner. Now you can, of course, color this, paint it underneath before you start putting on your um, leaves if you want to. If you're concerned with, um, you know, maybe, uh, anything kind of coming through, that's up to you. 
Um, you can throw paint on it later. You can add some feathers if you've got feathers around, especially, you know, if um, you want to be careful with feathers you find in the yard, okay, because we don't know uh, where they came from. But if you have chickens and you know that they're safe um, and don't have, and aren't sick, you can always use feathers in that way. You could harvest old feathers. You can even buy them in the store. Um, but, you know, some ni nice natural feathers would be great on something like this. I find that doing this kind of craft this time of year is just really, really relaxing to me. Like there's a kind of zen to it. You just kind of start putting leaves on and building up your base. And, and it's just really fun to see how those shapes go together, how those colors go together. And you just keep on layering and building. And then the fun thing, like I said, is to get, you know, friends together or maybe swap your pictures, get together on, um, you know, on Zoom and share your masks once they're made. Do a little mask fashion show with your fall masks. Um, and just, you know, really go crazy and have fun with it. Um, we all need a little bit of relaxation. We all need a little bit of fun these days, I think. And this is a good way to be able to do that. So there we go. Just adding a little glue here. Make sure it all sticks down. Um, so yeah, pretty simple, pretty simple stuff. Um, <laughs> let's see. I know I could, like I said, I could really get into the Zen of this and just sit here and do this all day, but you may not want to sit with me and do that. I don't know. Anyway, I hope that you will create one and then maybe share it on our digital wall. I'll give you that information in just a little bit because I would love to see what you make. Um, I was astounded the last time I did these and every time I've done these with just the, the, the amount of creativity people come up with. And, you know, every time, no matter how many times I've done something like this, every time somebody does something I would never have expected um, when they create their, their masks. Because it's just, I think it's a, you know what it is? It's, it's material that maybe we don't always think of using. And I think that that kind of gives us a little bit more freedom. Anyway, when you're all done with this, if you do want to preserve it, use a little bit of um, acrylic sealant and just after everything's dry, just give it a nice coating and that will help seal it in so it, uh, it lasts a little bit longer. So I am not going to make you sit here and watch as I play with all my leaves, but I think you get the basic idea. All right, back on over to this other camera. I've got a mess here. Oh my goodness, stuff everywhere. Okay, oh, here we go. Hi. <laughs> so um, yeah, I've got leaves everywhere in my office right now. But yeah, so you can see your mask kind of comes together. And all you need to do is put a little bit of string or ribbon to tie it on, or you could put like a popsicle stick and just use it, you know, hold it up to your face if you prefer. Um, you know, I still have this area here. If you don't want to go that big, cut off the part you don't want to, you don't want to decorate. It's totally fine. It's your mask. You do whatever you want to do. So those are our fun activities for today, bringing in a little bit of fall, having a, a little bit of color. One thing I completely forgot to mention is the science behind why this happens. <laughs> See, that green, that beautiful green, right? That's from chlorophyll. That chemical helps plants take the sun and transform that energy into glucose, sugar, okay, through a process called photosynthesis. Well, in the fall, as the hours of light grow shorter, the trees, dis uh, deciduous trees, trees that don't remain green all year, um, save energy and actually stay warmer by getting rid of their leaves. You know, they have to respire. They have to breathe through these leaves. And as they go into hibernation, getting rid of these leaves actually lets them stay warmer, use less energy and make it through the uh, winter. As that happens, the green colored chlor uh, chlorophyll degrades and breaks down in the leaf. And what's behind it are the wonderful pigments that were hiding there the whole time. Okay. And there are actually other types of chlorophylls. One is red, one is uh, yellow. They capture different wavelengths of light. Um, and so these leaves are actually, these colors are there all the time. It's just the green is covering and hiding and masking those colors. And as that chlor uh, chlorophyll goes away, the colors beneath are revealed and those pigments are ones that we can see, um, which is pretty, pretty neat. So that is our fall leaf craft. Um, I'll be back next week at three. Next week, um, we're doing space week. So all my um, programs next week are space themed. It's going to be a ton of fun. Um, and then uh, 
we've got some Halloween and fall crafts coming up a little bit later on this month. We're going to make a cool little plushy pumpkin out of a t-shirt. Got some spooky stuff. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, so make sure you also check out at three o'clock on Wednesdays. I have Lego lovers where I have all kinds of fun Lego based challenges. And then on Friday, we have Friday steam where we take some science, technology, engineering, art, and math, mash it up together and learn something new. Also, be sure you check out our website um, at warrenlib.org. Uh, we have our events calendar up. We have got a ton of stuff planned for October. And we also have our spooktacular reading event this month. So that is for kids and adults. You can earn prizes for reading books. Make sure you jump in and do that. Also, make sure you stop by your local branch. Each branch is open one day a week. Northeast is Mondays. Uh, Southwest is Tuesdays. Headquarters branch in Belvedere is Wednesdays, and Catherine Dixon Hoffman branch in Blairstown is on Thursdays. So you can come in and browse for books, and I know people have been waiting for that a long time. Uh, yeah, oh, last thing I did say I would tell you, we have a special digital wall on Padlet. So the website is padlet.com slash wclmakers. It is a moderated wall. I check it. Nothing can get posted unless I've okayed it. So it's a safe place for kids to share their work. Um, I would love to see your masks, you know, like if you make one of these leaf masks, make sure you post it there so I can see you in your amazing creation. Um, we would love to build our community of makers. I don't know when I'm going to be able to do real programs in person again, but in the meantime, I do love connecting with you online as much as we're able. All right. My name is Sandy Roberts. I'm the Makerspace Coordinator for the Warren County Library System. I hope that you stay safe, stay healthy, and keep making and creating. I will see you soon.